Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's really good to have you on this Friday morning. And yes, it is the weekend, which means we've got to get you sorted when it comes to some entertainment. And that box is going to be ticked by the one and the only JP Sebastian. I'm supposed to tick the box for entertainment? No and, pressure, uh, JP. Yes, I mean, you know you do this. <laughs> Yesterday you did it, today you did it. And we got to talk about some movies, JP. Yeah. I think the cinema is going to see me this weekend. If not for Spirited Away, which yeah. we'll touch on at sure, some sure. point, we got to get into these new movies, some really interesting interesting characters are going to be on the big screen from Zoe Kravitz to FKA Twigs. Uh -huh. Let's get into it, please. Uh, it's the Zoe Kravitz one that probably sticks out for me most, but I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later okay. in the show. Uh, the first one, FKA Twigs, stars with Bill Skarsgård oh, in... I love him. Uh, uh, what, what do you love him from? Oh, Before I even say true the name of this movie. blood. It's one of my... I, like, I don't really touch the Vamp uh -huh. series, uh -huh. but that series in particular... For real? Chef's Kiss. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, on the other hand, I know him from It, the Clown, obviously. Uh, oh. So he do, he's he got a poncho for playing it? creeps. Yes. Does creeps very well, and in this one, he's a creepy crow. Uh, and uh, this is a reboot of a movie that a lot of people feel like should not have been touched. Okay. Uh, some movies you might just say to yourself, I mean, uh, what's the point? Yeah. Uh, also, because there was this legacy and this aura around the original. Uh, I've not seen this myself, so I'm not reviewing it. I do have a glimmer of hope for it, but man, critics are already trashing it. Uh, no. Scores just came out today, like this morning, so like on Metacritic, which agglomerates all the scores of big fancy publications, it's like sitting on 29 out of 100. What? <laughs> that's pretty low. Uh, but that's not surprising either, because like I said, uh, a lot of people, myself included for the most part, even though like I said, I wanted to be hopeful, uh, feel like this is a story that shouldn't have been touched. So the idea is uh, from a comic book series from before all this Marvel stuff began. 1994 was when the movie came out. The comic is from 1989 when James O'Barr wrote the story about a guy named Eric Draven, who's a musician. And he uh, believes, and she believes too, FK Twigs in this case, that uh, he's found his soulmate, that they're bound together uh, by destiny uh, in love for the rest of their lives. And uh, violence befalls their relationship. Uh, she is sexually assaulted and they, I don't know if it happens in this movie too, but definitely from the original story, they are both killed. Wow. And he's given a compact with this um, mystical, mythological type crow. I don't know which mythology it's from. I, don't, I think it's fabricated for the comic. Right. Uh, that gives him the ability of invulnerability to take revenge for her. So bullets don't work, mm. uh, death does not work mm. anymore. And from some weird place between life and the afterlife, being undead, Eric Draven takes his revenge for what happened to the woman that he loves. So the reason why there's this halo around it, this really don't touch sort of feeling is because the original movie, geez, Brandon Lee was the actor who originally played right. the pro and uh, was tragically shot mm. dead on set. And uh, that's not the reason in itself. It's also because he was such a promising young star because yeah. that movie, there was such a pathos to it. There was such a poetry, uh, such a gravitas, uh, like it's, it's, uh, it, it's legacy, it's place in people's hearts. It's the reason a lot of people ended up being goth. A lot of people yeah. ended up being emo. Uh, but why I was slightly hopeful for this is because it looked like it would be updating that whole aesthetic. Right. Uh, you know, there's a whole age cohort that I do not know about who like people like Lil Uzi Vert, yeah. Lil Uzi Horizontal, I don't know. And they do face tattoos and that's their way of expressing yes. angst. Yes. That's their way of expressing pain. I hope that it has the uh, the... The, the, the chios mm. to grab the bull by the horns, but it seems like critics are already saying it's more involved in itself being a mechanical sort of action story because it doesn't have the bravery to take on the emotional aspect. Uh, but man, Bill Scars God's good. He's uh, good. FK Twigs. FK Twigs, well, interesting that we're seeing on the big screen. Uh, she is a performer. She's usually. done she's indie movies singer. too. Uh, okay, tiny ones this. that didn't make necessarily big screen. Okay. And, and so she's got a place in her heart for doing stuff that has a big heart at the center. Mm. But I don't know that they could rely on the people behind the scenes to, oh, to you get said how much out of 100 so far? From major critics, yeah. 29 out of 29. 100. 29, oh probably goodness. downhill from you. I hope that that can improve. I mean, I'm going to try to get it to 30 at least by reviewing it soon. Inspector Sun, though, let's talk about that uh, one. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of animations that come across the shores that sometimes aren't Pixar, but are trying to be. And mm -hmm. you, you know what, shame. Sometimes you've got to give a tiny studio a chance. And this one doesn't look too bad. We've we've received some trash in the past <laughs> from a random fly-by-night studio in Belgium or, or France or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But uh, this one is from Spain and mm. it, it, it follows a sort of vein of, uh, you know, Inspector Poirot, uh, murder on the Orient Express type of detective series, the yeah. murder is right in this room with us type of thing. Yeah. 
Um, Very cute. Exactly. So, uh, but it's obviously that bent, but for kids. Mm. And uh, the the joke being that the detective is not as bright as Poirot, and he's a bit more of a Clouseau sort of, a uh, bit more of a naked gun type situation. That he's a bit Wait, of a. Wait, what is he supposed to be? Uh, they're all set. supposed to be spiders, apparently. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I was also I was like puzzling over this for the longest time. Like I, I'm pretty sure spiders believe they have noses at the very least. Um, but it seems like the the production company was like, we know spiders. Don't ask us to do fish. Don't ask us to do anything else. Zootopia have all the animals you like, but yeah. we, we we got spiders, spiders down. So look, uh, I'm sure it might uh, pre- uh, the kids might appreciate it. They sometimes watch some of these B grade kind of stuff mm-hmm. and. Maybe they do the job for the kids. That's all that counts. And apparently, by some critics' opinion, there's some bits and pieces here for the adults too, a little snickers and laughs. But mostly it's about seeing the smile on your kid's face. So. Yes. That said, though, I think that the one that I would recommend... Please, let's get into it. The final movie for today, or at least for now, and, Spirited and Away. all of these out on the weekend. Uh, it's such a rare opportunity. Look at that beautiful poster, by the way. Oh, God, uh, I'm so obsessed. It's uh, the, um, the movie that won the second Oscar for animation. The first one was Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Deserving. Uh, I love Shrek. Absolutely Shrek. Yes. Uh, and uh, Spirited Away is from a studio that I've been uh, gushing about for the past <laughs> month because there's this... Uh, festival that's happening that's trying to celebrate the studio in uh, South Africa at the moment and you can find this at major cinemas uh, and also independent cinemas. Uh, it is a masterpiece every frame. It's preposterous. And one of the craziest things that I mentioned about it yesterday is mm. that Steven Spielberg himself said that he is not sure that Disney could make anything as beautiful as Spirited Away. Uh, they vance Mabaru. Uh, like the, uh, the West can be grateful that John yeah. Lasseter, the big wig of uh, Pixar, brought it here. The, the John Lasseter, who, by the way, says to his Pixar animation uh, mm-hmm. animators, he says, "If ever you run out of inspiration, yeah. go watch Ghibli." Wow, that's that's the professional advice. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the, you know where I'm going to be this 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 weekend. Definitely spirited away. But actually, later I'm going to be talking about another one, Zoe Kravitz. You mentioned, yes. and and I might put down money for that too. It looks okay. pretty intriguing. Interesting. I'm hoping the same. I love Zoe Kravitz. She's like my spirit animal. She She's so dope. But yes, uh, the cinema is definitely going to see me this weekend. I don't know about you, Zanilo. Are you a movie girl, movie buff? Oh, honey, I am the biggest movie girl. I must watch movies now, every day, all day, every time. I would be watching a movie now if I wasn't here. I love them, <laughs> genuinely, I do. And this is why I love the fact that JP's always here just to let us know what it is we must watch, right? Hello? Absolutely. Oh, hi, yes. JP is the best <laughs> when it comes to movies. And if he says watch it, then we got to watch it. Uh, Except for that one movie that you gave a terrible review and I saw it and I was like, that was so fantastic. How dare you? Which one? The Wolverine movie. Uh, you can't even give it the full name. <laughs> you don't even know what, who, who's the other guy. But I knew what it was about. Deadpool and Wolverine, all right. So Nelly, you should watch it. It is so good. I promise you don't listen to yeah. JP on that one.